Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The fourth phase of the road improvement and maintenance program valued at 42 million US dollars rolls out in Saltabus. St. Lucians can now keep their mobile numbers while changing mobile service providers. IAM Jet Center groups to establish a fixed based operation at the HIA. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Residents of Saltibus have been encouraged to capitalize on the various opportunities a road rehabilitation project in the community presents. The call came at the official contract signing and sword turning ceremony of the fourth phase of the road improvement and maintenance program valued at 42 million US dollars. The government of St. Lucia secured the loan from the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan through the Export-Import Bank to improve the national road infrastructure. The signing took place Friday, 31st May, 2019. More from Lisa Joseph. The Governor of St. Lucia has identified three common issues impacting the national road network, air and seaports. They are poor physical condition, limited capacity and poor connectivity, resulting in the country's high vulnerability in the event of extreme weather conditions. The government's goal, therefore, is to enhance St. Lucia's infrastructure, which will inevitably support economic activity. Under the medium-term development plan for 2019-2022, the enhancement of 99 kilometers of roads is a key goal to achieving sustainable and inclusive growth by 2022. Honorable Stevenson King is the Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor. The target roads which are mainly primary and secondary roads, are located in 11 districts and have an approximate total length of 101.32 kilometers, less than 15% of our entire road network in this country. So even though the numbers may seem big, in terms of our coverage of roads being repaired or reconstructed under this program, it's only less than 15% of our total road infrastructure. Routine maintenance of the road network is costly at some $26 million annually. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Ivor Daniel, says over the years it has been a difficult exercise for the Ministry of Infrastructure due to budget constraints and the havoc rain events bring to bear on the roads. Most of our roads in St. Lucia, when we measure it from the International Roughness Index are really, some of them are relatively fair. The others are at about Erie 14, which is very poor. And we have a, and most of those roads are prevalent on the tertiary road network. So we are indeed grateful to the Minister for Finance, the Prime Minister, our minister under his leadership, and the cabinet of ministers for the second year allocating to the department $14 million for routine maintenance on our roads. Several development projects are due to begin in the south of the island, and Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney says the Saltibus Jetwin Road project is not simply about comfort, but an opportunity to improve lives. So we have three cruise ship companies that are coming to build facilities here in View 4. So we have Carnival Cruise Lines looking to put a home port facility. We also have MSC and Royal Caribbean coming. So this road is the beginning of creating an opportunity for you to take advantage of that. So you're going to have cruise ship passengers now based in Viewfort, who now are going to want to go to Souffert, and your job is to make sure you distract them from going to Souffert as much as possible. So all of the attractions that are here in this constituency, we need to fix up the entire road network in order to make sure that taxi drivers can bring them to these facilities. The 42 million US dollar loan injection by the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, is hailed as a true demonstration of the friendship St. Lucia shares with Taiwan. Foreign Minister Dr. Joseph Wu emphasized this. The United States, especially coming from the State Department, continue to say that Taiwan is a democratic success story, Taiwan is a reliable partner, and Taiwan is a force for good in the world. And we try to be a force for good in the world. We try to be a force for good in the world by working together with the partners. And St. Lucia is a very good 
partner of ours, and we will continue to work together with you in whatever way that we can be helpful. The Taiwanese firm Overseas Engineering and Construction Cooperation, or ECC, is undertaking the design and construction of the roads and will subcontract Senushan companies to carry out the works. Nationwide Construction Limited has been subcontracted for the Salty Bus Jetwin Rehabilitation. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. St. Lucians can now keep their mobile numbers while changing mobile service providers as the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority ushers in number portability in its member states. Since the mid-1990s, mobile number portability has been expanding rapidly across the world. First launched in Dominican Republic in the Caribbean region in 2009, the MNP soon followed in the Cayman Islands, Costa Rica and Jamaica. Over the past four years, the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, ECTEL, the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, the NTRC, and service providers have been collaborating closely on developing an MNP project that would best serve the ECTEL member states. On Monday, June 3, 2019, number portability for mobile telephone numbers was launched across the ECTEL region in Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and St. Lucia. The minister responsible for telecommunications, Guy Joseph, says it is the beginning of real liberalization of the telecommunications sector. Just having the option of a flow or a digicel or another I'll come as some of the other islands may have has not truly resulted in the level of liberalization that we really require in this region. And so this is just another step in moving in the right direction as far as full liberalization of this sector. The mobile service providers welcome number portability and says they are fully prepared to deliver the world-class service to their customers. Number portability is a true test of competitiveness. In the market, giving customers the ability to choose their provider based on service levels, pricing and convenience. I feel very confident that there are many businesses in the residential marketplaces across the ECTEL markets who will now be able to benefit from our resilient hurricane-tested networks. With a keen understanding of the life-changing impact that comes with number portability and delivering on our promise to ECTEL, a dedicated team was put together and the required funding was allocated to deliver this project despite numerous challenges. We've put together by the best commercial and technical minds in the region using the best equipment and technical support services. Although challenges may arise during the implementation of the new service, the NTRC says it is committed to ensuring that all mobile customers wishing to port can do so effortlessly. The customers and the providers have an avenue for redress with the NTRC, which is equipped with the dispute regulations to solve any disputes that may arise. Going into this new era of MNP, the NTRC will be executing its mandate to oversee and regulate as per the Telecommunications Act of 2000 and its ensuing regulations. According to Ectel, number portability for fixed or landline telephone numbers will be available at a later date once alternative fixed telephone services are available across the Ectel region. On 31st May, St. Lucia concluded hosting duties in the 2019 DEFCA Hackathon. Developing the Caribbean DEFCA is the region's leading event for exploring how digital and data impacts national development. DEFCA each year brings together a diverse community of innovators spanning the public sector, NGOs, technologists, researchers, and notable international partners across multiple countries. Marlon Narcis is the director of the Division of Public Service Modernization. The Government of St. Lucia through the Division of Public Sector Modernization has embarked on an ICT roadmap, the Government ICT Evolution, which focuses on supporting digital transformation to leverage technological advancements in artificial intelligence, computer technologies like cloud computing, social media, 
mobile, mobile um, services. One step in the transformation and digital transformation roadmap is the approval of an open data policy and strategy, which is critical to the it is a critical component in the digital governance, data sharing, and more specifically, the opening of government data to the public. The hackathons are software development contests providing unique opportunities in the field of ICT for aspiring and professional developers to network while using tech innovation to solve some of the region's biggest challenges. Peggy Ann Sudat is the permanent secretary in the Department of the Public Service. The theme for DevGuard 2019, smart communities, smarter people, pulls from the general, the same general idea that you cannot propose to support technological change without also engaging the people who use the said technology so that, we, so that they could participate and contribute to their own development and well-being in the emergent digital economy. St. Lucia was one of six countries in the region to host the DEFCA 2019 Hackathon. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Hurricanes can be very destructive. Although we can't stop them, we can lessen the effects of hurricanes on our lives and property by preparing. Start by having a family disaster management plan in place long before the hurricane season starts. Discuss your plan with your family and ensure that everyone knows their role. Okay everyone, let's go over our family disaster plan from last year. You should also have an emergency supplies kit with items that do not need refrigeration and will last for some time. Include canned foods, water, clothing, first aid supplies, flashlights, battery-powered radios, batteries, sanitation and hygiene supplies, medication, special need items for infants, the elderly and persons with disabilities. Remember to regularly replace items like water, food, medication and batteries. Ensure that your home and vehicle insurance coverage are appropriate and up-to-date and secure important documents in a watertight container. Ensure that your house and property is in good condition and can weather the storm. Trim branches away from your house and prune all dead or weak trees on your property. The Atlantic hurricane season is from June to November, but preparedness is year-round. Always be prepared. This message brought to you by the Beaufort South District Disaster Preparedness Committee and NEMO and funded by the USAID Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Anisha. And welcome everyone to your update on activities emanating from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The under-15 40 overs schools cricket tournament moves into its quarter-final stages Wednesday for what are expected to be some very keenly contested encounters. Two fair comprehensive are expected to face Granivere Secondary at the Philip Marsley Ground in Vieux4. Archipo Secondary and Leon Hess Comprehensive will do battle at the Larry Seuss playing field in Denry. Castries Comprehensive Secondary will square off with Shrizzle Secondary at the Mindu Philip Park, while St. Mary's College will be up against the Ira Simmons Secondary School at the Grosile playing field. Matches ball off at 10 a.m. The Youth Empowerment Project will move into another phase now that the logo competition is completed, with the winners about to be announced. Project coordinator Joanne Husbands told NTN Nightly that this competition, carried out through April 2019, Youth Month, will set the tone for the continued implementation of the project. The official logo, which will be chosen from the beneficiaries who submitted their artistic work um, will be representative or that logo will be representative of empowerment to them as a youth and to their community and we will be using that as an official logo for the project to champion the overall project and all of its subcomponents. The slogan for the logo competition was enlighten, enrich, empower and that's your update today from Youth Development and Sport. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks Ryan. 
The Sanusha Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA, has signed an agreement to set up a fixed-based operation and FBO at the Huronara International Airport, the HIA. This is the result of a process which commenced three years ago and will complement the proposed master plan for the HIA. The new fixed-based operation at HIA will raise the service profile of the airport. IAM Jet Center Group is a regionally based provider of premium services to corporate aircraft with FBOs in Barbados, Jamaica, Grenada and Tortola. Speaking at the signing ceremony, Chairman Paul Worrell expressed his excitement in collaborating with SLASPA and adding value to the local aviation industry. SLASPA's Acting General Manager, Mr. Darren Snack, says the construction of the new facility is part of a 30-year master plan that will create several opportunities for St. Lucia. This is particularly true for the tourism and travel industries, providing a unique experience for premium class passengers. The groundbreaking for the IAM Jet Center St. Lucia is expected to take place in the coming weeks with construction geared to be completed at the end of 2019. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyal. Cyclone ni force capable pour détruire tout ça qui est en chimie. Nous passons de bout, mais nous avons fait préparation pour protéger la vie, bien et propriété nous. Premièrement, c'est fourni un plan pour management des as pour FAMO. Longtemps avant la saison de cyclone a commencé, discuter un plan avec FAMO et faire si on ce que tout le monde connaît, ça y est pour faire. Bon, tout le monde, à nous discuter un plan de management de cyclone nous pour l'année passée. Ou aussi, il y a une boîte de provision, avec des qui pas besoin de un fridge et qui dit pour chaque temps. Manger un tin, had, de l'eau, lamp, radio, batterie, we made, des pour nettoyer le corps. Provision est spéciale pour les mamans, les grands gens, les gens qui sont malades et les femmes. Pas oublier pour replacer des choses comme de l'eau, manger, we made, avec batterie, weekly. Assurer que l'assurance d'auto est caillou en date. Et chen tout papier pour un coup de l'eau par les joints. Assurer que les cailloux sont dans de bonnes conditions. Couper tout le monde avec les pieds de bois qui pour les cailloux. Saison cyclone, c'est juin pour novembre. Les préparations, c'est toute l'année. Pas de corps. C'est une commission par groupe management des as bien fort et place management des as en cette ici. Et financé par l'Agence pour le développement international Amérique, Bureau assistance des as de l'autre pays. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. Monsieur Tarnisha, Monsieur Madame, Département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement sur le CGIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui vous a dit Nouvelle Arcoyon. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. C'est le CGIS qui a avancé plus près pour établir une technologie à l'industrie agricole, qui a servi computer. Pour faire ça possible. Pour les autres, l'organisation agricole, ça c'est CADI, a conduit un jour atelier pour te discuter de manière pour faire secteur agricole plus savant pour la situation climat, les venir pour le travail agricole, activité à placer bonne attention à sur la place comme il y a ces mêmes manières pour ça ménager le changement qui a fait souvent en climat. Pour te faire ça possible, CADI a trouvé assistance et support l'autre organisation comme et l'industrie de l'agriculture avec les autres collègues, la commission des organisations de pays Caraïbes là, avec ICA, l'autre organisation agricole, avec les étudiants oui, aussi. Le représentatif CADI, c'est ici Andrea Vieira, dit que ICA comme un comme organisé à Télé Sala pour porter plus de clarté en meilleure façon pour servir la technologie computer en affaires agricoles. Les Grecs et agences qui engagés dans l'industrie qui comprennent plus mais à présent et qui va aller pour augmenter l'activité économique, production de oui et façon pour beaucoup de informations et puis secteur. Le ministre de l'Agriculture, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, conseille pour la plus encouragement pour les gens en secteur adopter la technologie à service computer. Selon le ministre Joseph, l'initiative SALA. Qui peut tuer un guide avec un bon guide pour les, les amis agricoles pour collaborer, pour trouver des informations des affaires, la place, à l'air, et aussi pour trouver des solutions à ce qui a continuellement 
menacé l'économie agricole. Là, j'ai eu plusieurs démarches qui j'ai faites au niveau de la terre, qui a servi la technologie par service computer, que j'ai testé, développé pour aider les professionnels des affaires agricoles, pour éprouver la vie par rotation, productivité agricole, et plus pour faire l'argent, et pour réduire à ce qui est risquable en profession. Ça, là. On doit avoir Joseph ajouter aussi, pour ça, là, qui a aidé l'industrie agricole en cette ci pour renforcer le changement climat, pour faire suivre à toute une stabilisation et que nous et sous les manger. Ces autres cyclones pour Kaïbla a commencé. Et commencé depuis les premiers jeux et déjà tenu un temps qui a été déjà féroce qui développait de 300 lieux de Bermuda en finissement du mois de mai. C'est quoi des agences pour faire ces cyclones J'ai fait une prédiction qui, dans les salles, ces cyclones n'ont normal en activité yo à région. Selon yon gagne hod université Colorado, yo présenté yon prédiction qui la gagne 13 mauvais temps à parmi yo sec qui développé au cyclone avec D qui est très fort. Yon lot sorte de science qui ca suivre avec climat fait prédiction qui la gagne 40% assurance qui c'est activité mauvais temps qui vivant. Yo ca dit la gagne 9 pour 15 mauvais temps côté 4 pour 8 qui ont développé pour cyclone, pendant 2 pour 4 qui ont très actifs. Le département qui a gardé des situations tant cette ci qui a conseillé cette ci même si la production est là, il y a pour continuer pour une bonne proportion de la saison cyclone. Toujours coûter à pouvoir ce temps et faire toutes ces préparations qui sont nécessaires pour une note des informations de niveau. En parlant de ça, c'est nous qui sorti pour ce cyclone pour l'année 2019, qui a commencé avec Andrea, Barry, Chatal, Dorian, Erin, Ferdinand, Gabriel, Umberto, Imelda, Jerry, Karen, Lorenzo, Melissa, Nesta, Olga, Pablo, Rebecca, Sebastian, Tanya, Van et Wendy. Encore encore, toutes ces Jean qui est engagé dans ah, ces agences là qui est engagé de protection pour faire un cyclone dans cette ci qui a conseillé le peuple à payer pour prendre toutes les précautions qui sont nécessaires durant la saison pour assurer que les propriétaires et la famille bien protégés si on a passé un cyclone. Et c'est comme ça que nous retrouvons votre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous garder et pour vous donner une invitation pour vous donner encore si vous consommez la vie pour vous donner une nouvelle à Koyol. Après ça, vous avez vu un présent. Merci au Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy at times with some scattered light to moderate showers. Moisture and instability ahead of an approaching tropical wave will produce some cloudiness and showers mainly across the southern portion of the Lesser Antilles during the forecast period. Two other tropical waves located over the eastern and far eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbor was high at 4.38 p.m. and will be low again at 9.05 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 5.45 p.m. and will be low again at 10.32 p.m. The seas moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.34 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.